Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Today we're going to look at the master composer Philip Glass's use of polyrhythms and interlocking arpeggios to create um, a beautiful shifting texture. I want to focus on one particular trick he uses. Well, let's dive in. <laughs> Glass has been at it forever. He studied in Paris with Nadia Boulanger, the really sort of probably the single most important uh, 20th century um, European classical teacher who's responsible for the, the, the sort of foundational uh, education of hundreds of um, great Western classical composers. And because he has that foundation in Western theory, his use of voice leading is impeccable. But Glass goes a lot further than the conventional tonic dominant relationships that, you know, characterize 19th century Western music. And in order to uh, create the sort of smooth sonorities that he's famous for, he uses arpeggiated chords and polyrhythms, interlocking arpeggios to um, orchestrate his music. Well, one thing that I've done is I've played through his piano etudes an awful lot over the course of the past few years. There's two books of them, and it's very instructive. But a very early work is called Glassworks, and I'm, I'm going to say it's sometime from the mid-70s. One of the most famous pieces is uh, the opening. It's a simple uh, piano figure that sounds like... Um, this. And so that texture right there is the texture I want to look at today. And it's, it's something special. Let's look at it on the screen. So I'm going to run the metronome uh, as I do this <laughs> because we want to hear this basic click. So one of the fundamental things that we've got in music is subdivision, how we divide the beat. I'm going to divide the beat in three equal parts. Here we go. Nothing really particularly special about that. I played an A minor triad in second inversion, E, A, C. Beautiful, sounds great just by itself. Now, what if I, instead of using three notes, dividing that beat equally, use only two? Listen to this interesting effect. I still divided the beat into three equal parts, and yet what happened here was I got this sort of sound of two notes. We call this a polyrhythmic oscillation. <laughs> we actually hear oscillation a lot in orchestration and film and TV music. Uh, I, I hear it constantly, just a couple of notes wiggling back and forth in a chord. Listen to it without the metronome. It sounds perfectly even, it is, and yet it's not perfectly, uh, it, it's not on the eighth note beat, it's on an eighth note triplet beat. Now with the metronome back in. You can hear it's an interesting effect, right? All right, now what Glass innovated, what he did to create a fascinating instrumental texture was he let the two parts or three parts of his orchestration cover both bases. Now, if I just take that A minor oscillation here and add to it a very simple, something like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and against it, I'm gonna get that instrumental texture that we heard earlier. Oh, and this needs to be on the beat. 
Good. Beautiful, right? Two rhythms at the same time, two oscillations at the same time going at different it sounds like different paces they're not really they're just subdividing the beat differently well this can be just so beautiful when you play um, a simple chord progression so let's use a an, an old-fashioned uh, progression that we call the um the andalusian cadence and of course that's uh, let's just record so you can see it as block chords so A minor, C over G, F, let's do E sus to E7. See what I did there? Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a version of that using um, this instrumental form of harmony. Instrumental form means how I perform and voice the chords. It's a beautiful, beautiful effect. glitch there. You see what happened. I got a little hang. But wow, what a nice effect, huh? Boy, I just love that sound. And, and look at what I've done. I've just kind of played intuitively, but... That rhythm, dum da da dum dum da da dum dum da da dum dum da da dum, that you hear again and again is called a resultant rhythm. And polyrhythms will always give you a resultant rhythm. Well, um, I'm going to remind you that we're running a holiday challenge. Martin Heidenreich and I have challenged our subscribers to do an arrangement of Silent Night, Still a Noct. Um, hit me up in the comments. I'll put a link to the page where we're, you know, sort of like co um, collating everything. Martin's handling all the, uh, the arrangements with everyone because you can't do the whole thing. We're just going to do eight bar sections and then jump them together. Well, I hope this has been useful. You know, like and subscribe. Comments are great for the life of the channel. I want to hear what you're up to right now. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.